So anyway, so let's get started. Uh, anyone want to um, start us off with, with uh, a topic to discuss? Okay. So uh, is there anything from your group that is the most, most important thing in, in running one of these projects that we should discuss as a priority? Um, so it, it depends. I think what we've seen here is that people are following different ways. People have different um, organizations. So some people are working on their own. Some people are working in teams. Some people are in the same location and some people are distributed in different locations. Um, we had a conversation earlier around people from different organizations uh, working together and sort of restrictions that um, organizations might place on how we share code and so on. So I think really it's, it, it's complicated. I think for me, the um, essential thing is to um, start looking at, if, if you want to proceed in an agile way, um, start looking at um, what is a product that you can use as sort of a test to see whether this would work for you and assign somebody uh, the responsibility for handling the requirements for that product. So I guess in that sense, um, if there are groups of people who are putting requests to a piece of software um, to have one person who manages those requests and to prioritize those requests and you know, sort of um, work that into the project. And then the next thing is to understand, um, try and understand the skills that are required to implement, um, get the people together who need to do that and start working on um, schedules to meet and get commitment from people to talk to each other, to collaborate. Um, it's really basic project management stuff. So that's where I would start. Okay, thanks. Uh, anyone have any comments? Pardon? And money? Oh, comments, yeah. So, I mean, do people think that that's a good idea? So, bef well, obviously it's a good idea, but I think it, uh, maybe a good idea is to actually not necessarily apply Agile to the general model t as a start off, but actually think about a small project that someone's got that they have to do and run it as a test case, not necessarily to test out Agile, just to, so we learn about it and actually see all the issues that might come up in this type of project and give us a better idea of how to prepare for a full blown general model. So, I mean, as I look through the, the questions, I, I guess I'm left with a little bit of lack of clarity on wh whether or not we have a common vision of which aspect of future development is next generation. You know, we, we have Castle 2, we started off this week with you know, Castle 2, which is very much designed to be a next generation software project. Um, the U.S. has uh, the the national it's what national model team is working on the MAS project, which also has that same aspiration uh, to be a next generation project. And we clearly have heard about some significant evolution of you know several of the uh, existing software platforms. So I I guess you know the first question I have is is there something that we anticipate that we need beyond what could be there in a successful Castle 2 and MAS or whatever? Or, or are they, if made fully successful, 
will they fit the uh, the needs of the community? I think that's my first question about you know what are the expectations for future development and is there a need to initiate now a project that is looking even further than those? So does anyone have any comments on Rick's statement? Okay, I'll have, make a comment then. So um, my immediate uh, thoughts on what we need is basically, so I use stock synthesis, so obviously I want something like stock synthesis, but better. And when I mean better, I want probably random effects in it. Um, That's probably probably the probably the biggest thing I think. You're and, easy to please. <laughs> well, not really because I don't really want to use an approximation or or anything. So I or Bayesian. Um, so that means recoding stock synthesis and TMB, which is humongous project, right? Or or growing one of the existing in development packages to have that set of capabilities to be give you give the community the range of tools that they have with SS and other things um, and to also have full implementation of random effects and to do space well and to I, mean, I, I think it's actually the multi-species thing that's structurally a little bit harder, but, uh, but, uh, but I think all those things are within sight of the potential capabilities of the, the, generation, the generation and a half or whatever you want to call them, the models that are on the table now, uh, the Castle 2, the MAS, they all have the potential to do the things that we've been talking about wanting to have this week. So I, I guess I'm thinking more about what is it going to take to make those developments successful, what kind of enhanced communication between the development teams, what can we do to, and they're already talking to each other, this workshop has been a great help in, in moving that conversation forward. So what more can we do to encourage that? And how can we, you know, be certain we can bring new ideas into those projects as they progress? I mean, one way of thinking about it is, is what you'd have to do to do that. So stock synthesis, obviously, you'd have to recode it in TMB. Um, SAM already does, is in TMB and does stuff, but it, it's very specific. So you'd have to have all the features that stock synthesis has, including spatial and tagging and, and length frequency. And I mean, there's probably some in there that I don't know it already has, but there'd be a lot of changing. Um, there's, there's WAM right which uses tmb but and it's more similar to stock synthesis than sam but it still has very few features so it, it require a lot of things castle is probably more like castle 2 is more like stock synthesis but it does it isn't got the um the la Passe prox station and all that built into it that would have to be built in that might actually be a lot easier to do than than actually um recoding stock synthesis in, in, in um, TMB, depending on what needs to be changed. Um, I'm probably missing out some packages, but it's not like an easy choice because there's lots of different packages and they all have different things that need to be included. And it's hard to know which one's going to take the most work and which one's going to have the most issues. I think no can wait. Yeah, so, so, it's, so having, you know, access to the ability to deal with random effects, that's only the start. I mean, whoever develops the new package has to use the random effects sensibly in the model. And then the users of that model have to have the skill or ability to be able to look at the output and say, well, it is the software doing what I want. So it's not like, you know, SS3 isn't a programming environment, right? It's like SAS for stock assessment or something. You just select from the options available. 
whereas, and I guess Tam, Sam, to some extent, is that way. So, so that you know, it's going to be a big, a big. Uh, it's not going to you know just providing random effects within the S S three kind of framework. I mean, there's going to be a lot of thinking and exploration that has to go on to kind of discover what can be random, how should it be random, what, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that's true, but that's more about, you know, best practices and stock assessment, not necessarily the fundamentals of how you design the software package. So it, it's an important thing and there needs to be user guides and user interfaces and all that. Um, so, so I agree, but it's, it's not as fundamental to whether or not you put random effects in the model. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that we've got, one of the strengths of our community is the diversity of the models that are out there. And I don't, I, I'm not a great fan of, we should delete, you know, go into Undis computer and Dell star, Sam's dot star, because it's gone. We're not going to use it ever again. I don't think that's the right direction. I think that we should establish, uh, ideal, in a, you know, sort of the goals we would like of any package that is out there of this type. Obviously, these are all integrated analysis packages. And I think any package that can't do random effects isn't next gen. I don't think you have to have every feature of stock synthesis to be a next generation package. So I think, I, I, I don't think this is the right time for it, but I think I would start by saying, what are the features of a next generation package that all such packages should have. Now, some of them are closer than others. So from oddly enough, I see WAM, although I've never used it, and SAM as actually closer to the next generation than say Gadget, which has far more of the structural stuff that I think I'd like, but to get from there to here is gonna be quite a lot of work. Um, I also would think that a, a useful thing for us to try to do is to, uh, pick up on the other discussions we've had, which are the ability to, and I know um, Brian was working on this, the ability to move between packages so that we can do intercalibrations in a meaningful way. So I would hope that, you know, you could run the same model in SAM and stock synthesis uh, where they overlap and get pretty much the same answer. Now, each of them will then build off in different directions, but there's sort of a core functionality that we're after. Um, and to some extent, I'm less concerned about programming style within a package as opposed to programming practices across packages so that we can maximize the value of multiple endeavors as opposed to uh, getting um, unders to, to, to communicate with himself on a meaningful basis as he's recoding the model. Because I I think I don't think we've got a single project here that would fall into a medium to large software project just given the funding resources and, and the nature of our job. So uh, that's my two cents worth. Um, yeah, Rick. Yeah, I, I think I'm pretty much in agreement with much of that. Um, I, I think we should think about what sort of niches we're looking to fill, what sort of niches they're there. And one of those niches is the fully age-structured model that relies upon good age data. And that class of model is the WAM and the SAM models. And they do it very well and they're optimized for it. And a, gen a more generalized model than that is gonna have a hard time being as efficient as they are at that chore. Um, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't have good a connection, as you say, Andre, to models that are more generalized that do the age length thing and have a different range of capabilities. They could deal with different assessment situations that you just can't deal with um, with the, with the uh, fully age structured model. And so that's a dimension that needs to be covered. Now, that dimension, you know, has been collapsed uh, down to also being able to cover data limited. Um, you know, potentially though data limited is another niche uh, that doesn't have nearly as many bells and whistles as that the general purpose age length model does, but it's still 
has an overlap with it so that you can have some shared development. You can demonstrate easily that, yeah, where they overlap, they give the same answer, but one has strengths that cover very well in another dimension. And if we were clear about the various niches. Now, the other dimension of separating things is, is going to be geography. It's just going to be too hard to have platforms that are hosted and are, you know, shared broadly across it. Just the funding aspects of getting things done is going to be hard. So I, I, I have a hard time seeing how we get away from, you know, a European model, a North American model, and, uh, you know, model development in this area. I just, I mean, conceivably we can find ways, but setting that as a requirement that we have a generational model that is inherently fully international at this point is I think a uh, bridge too far. Uh, it's, it's great aspiration, but I think it's bridged too far. And I think we should make progress by having as much shared development communication, learn from each other uh, and, and use that as the, the step that's uh, reachable at this point in time. Ian, Ian uh, Taylor. Well, I guess I was actually gonna say something very similar to what Rick said, only maybe more optimistic about international collaboration. It, it seems like, you know, I agree that there's geographic differences in, in data availability and, you know, historical assessment methods, but, you know, around the Pacific, there's a whole bunch of us who are all, you know, have similar data issues and are already using stock synthesis. And so I, I guess I'm curious, you know, what would it take for, the, for that subset of model users to move from the, the current platform, which is Rick does all the development in Australia and IATTC and so on, benefit but also come back with great ideas and you know would contribute in different ways w what would it take to move from that status quo model to one where these pacific rim countries are sort of more collaboratively contributing to it software anyone want to respond to that uh, malcolm yeah <clears throat> yeah the uh the reserve they got a whole that's the story. Um, so we've heard lots about all these different models. So I think the geographic separation is a real problem. And we've heard this lovely idealistic notion that we can gen produce this next generation stock assessment model. Um, and we're going to talk about how we might do that. But I just think if we're talking about reality, we've got well over 100 SS models out there. Economically, to switch, that will cost. There's no, I can't see any realistic world where, uh, you know, Rick's just going to say, oh, I've had enough. I think I'll just stop now uh, because this new generation one's going to come along, which is going to take at least four to five years. So at, at least there's a need to maintain these other, all, all of the other models that are being used currently while the other ones. And so I think the suggestion of continuing their development whilst increasing uh, um, positive collaboration, which I think this is a really good start. Um, uh, that, that, that seems to be the only practical direction forward that's pretty much guaranteed to happen. The, the next generation stuff might happen, but, but if, the, if the current maintenance of what's going on now stops, then we're all in deep um, trouble, I think is the word I'm looking for. So um, uh, really, in, in terms of practicalities, I would really be keen to hear uh, if, if there's another way forward, but I think that's it. But I'm open to uh, alternatives. Yeah, Andre? Yeah, I can't speak on behalf of Australia, um, uh, mainly because I don't think anyone can speak on behalf of Australia. Uh, but I think that um, from the what I see in, in Australia is we are trying to move from bespoke models to generic models. I think Australia, like we did with supporting ADMB when it moved into the foundation, uh, while I can't see Australia funding a new model, I can easily see this kind of collaboration continuing, if nothing else, because 
Um, there are needs in the Australian side that we would like to be involved in development. I think having a open, more op slightly more open source version would have helped that little bit anyway. Um, having said that, having someone else do your work for you is not a bad thing. Um, the one thing I do think, I, I would love to see something like an NC's working group that actually tries to take this meeting to the next step and actually uh, rather more formally uh, takes each of the attributes of the models and, and identifies what are basically a needs statement for not redesigning every package, but essentially uh, getting into more detail on what I would like from Gadget. Because to be honest, the, the model that I find I'm least familiar with and more, most surprised at is Gadget, because there is so much in Gadget, but apart from the, unless you can speak Danish, I think you almost certainly uh, don't know enough of the details of, um, of, of Gadget. So, you know, Norwegians, Danes, Icelanders, uh, once you get out of that community, it's not terribly, the intensity is not high. So I think we could learn a lot of what's in there in Gadget. And I think to my mind, from a development point of view, that there are lots of things in there that I, I like. Um, the other side I think that we do need to talk about is the actual input output structure. I think we heard a lot about that. Uh, again, I suspect that's going to be jurisdictional. I don't see the U.S. putting its observer data online, even in whatever it was, uh, stockassessment.org, uh, because you'll have those guys jumping out of, in balaclavas out of helicopters and taking you away if you put our observer data. Um, so I think there's, there's, there's progress to be made there. Uh, I think common data formats, I think, are absolutely beneficial for us to be able to, to use the different models. Any comments? Okay, so um, here's a, something that's probably going to get me in trouble, but anyway, I'll say it anyway. So in the US, there's WAM, there's BAM, there's Stock Synthesis, there's, what else? There's, oh yeah, AMAC, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, I think I've left something out there too. Oh no, pardon? ASAP, yeah. Well, ASAP and WAM are kind of grouped together now since that. So, so um, why wouldn't those groups, because they're all getting funding from the same place, it's the federal government, and so they're doing different models, um, and why wouldn't those groups want to get together to produce mm -hmm. models that are similar? Um, and like I mentioned earlier in the, in the week, where the WAM, is that the WAM model was being presented. So WAM is sort of like the new version of ASAP, but it used random effects, right? So that's developing the next generation model. So why is that developing independently of what perhaps stock synthesis might turn into? Is it, is it a need for something right now? Um, you know, what is it? I mean, uh, the U.S. is a big place, and we're very regional, uh, right? And so, and we have a long histories so of regional development of models that are tailored to meet the regional databases and the regional needs of the managers. Um, you know, I, so this is as beneficial for us to get together and talk at this level of detail about uh, our approaches. Uh, it's a good forum for us. Um, we are investing now in, through the national modeling team and the development of MAS, right? So that, that is a national effort. None of the others are national efforts. Uh, all the others are, are regional efforts and, and they're all funded re regionally and they're all worked on by regional people. And so it doesn't come naturally that they are going to be closer together any more so than internationally things would be be closer together. There's nothing inherent about their development that would make them so. You know, they are, like all models, they're tailored to meet regional needs. SS started off that way. Um, so, um, you know, I think there's benefit through the communication of moving everything closer together and, and continually reevaluating, you know, just how much development effort, because if something is going to get widely used, it's going to get widely requested, widely uh, help desk needs. So the 
the maintenance of anything that ends up getting used broadly is not insignificant. And, and so that is a limiting factor on how many things get to that level. And uh, so, you know, we really can't uh, invest. Either it's gonna be small and regional and only used regionally essentially, except for minor other uses, or if it's gonna be large, it needs to have sufficient support to, to, to maintain it and to provide that help desk. Um, Momoka. Uh, so as uh, I presented in the past day of, of this meeting, uh, Japan uh, will uh, increase the number of stock assessment and uh, we are uh, planning to uh, incorporate many, uh, probably uh, stock assessment models and uh, our local scientists also want to develop their uh, own software. So in such case, uh, for us, uh, it is really uh, difficult to jump to next generations of the world. And we want to start with a uh, current uh, variety of stock assessment models. But in such case, if uh, it is really uh, convenient, uh, if the model output or input data also is uh, standardized, and uh, uh, if there are any um, advice of the data format of the output model, if there is any data format, uh, we can, uh, it is very convenient if we uh, develop our new uh, stock assessment model. So I think it's, it, is, uh, it would be a good first step for the next generation model, I think. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, any comments? Andre, you wanted to? Yeah. I, I, again, I think it's the wrong time to do this, but I think the groups that are already talking about common data format, getting that information out to, to the broad community, that would be beneficial. Obviously, each package has got its own special features, but have you know the style. I think we can we could we we could work on something like that. Um, I, I think just going back to the U.S. Uh, as 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 Rick pointed out, the U.S. is a very, very big place uh, with a lot of people and uh, a lot of history in stock assessment. Um, but I think one of the reasons that even Alaska is starting to use stock synthesis is that as we build platforms that sort of assimilate what the individual needs are, I think we start to use them. So, uh, you know, in my, I'm going to change my hat here and be Australian. Um, I think it's fair to say we've now, at least in the southeast where Gemery was talking about, we've pretty much eliminated all of my, I have to say my because I developed them all, all the models I developed when I used to work there have been removed and replaced by stock synthesis, not because my programs had bugs in them, they probably did, uh, but because synthesis evolved to the point where you could pretty much do what I was doing in a platform that's being maintained and doesn't rely on me. Um, and so I think that just that concept is one that uh, I think, you know, is a real benefit of the, of the generic model. So I think a place like Australia, um, I'm looking at Robin, if you could get rid of my gummy shark assessment tomorrow and replace it with synthesis, uh, she's nodding. Um, we can't do that. So I, I, that's where I see the next stage of development is to see, you know, where are there bespoke models that are providing some feature that we don't have in the general models and can we put that in without too much pain and I think to some extent that's the re the, you know the regional issue in, in the US comes from the nature of the data the nature of the problems uh, and we heard you know the southeast has its unique problems uh, I don't think you know inertia is something you can actually deal with that's just a nature that's just human nature but along those lines, I think I'd add that the first wave of SS development was very West Coast groundfish oriented. The second wave was really driven by the needs coming from Mark and the Tuna Commission, Andre from Cyro and from the Southeast. Uh, the, the wave of features that came in were coming from other regions uh, than the local region. 
Yeah, the the I was going to say the problem, but the the feature or the characteristic of of that approach was that it wasn't designed in advance. So what we're trying to do here is actually design it in advance, and that's that's how most models work. Is basically, you know, one person built something they needed, then they had another assessment, and they added on features, and then they added on enough features that everyone else started thinking, well, I'll use that because it's easier to use. But what we're trying to do here is actually design the model so that the project is going to go in a different way and hopefully be a lot better because we're designing it not just you know putting out fires when someone needs something yeah but it's been said many times this week it's not to design all the features in for the beginning it's to design the modularity so that it's way easier to add in the features and you anticipate the basic structure that's why the you know, decisions about random effects, decisions about species, decisions about areas, you know, the, the major things that are gonna drive uh, potential need for augmentation, um, you know, anticipate the big things and do it in a way that provides the flexibility. I, I can't see going beyond that, uh, just getting the software engineers involved early on to create that first architecture so that we are going to have that upward upward and uh, expandability. Uh, any comments on that? I, um, I have a comment on that. So yeah, it's, it's, it's vital that that um, basic archi um, architecture is there. Um, however, I think with the next generation model, we should have most of the common features in the model at the start, because if, if we're going to get funding and we're going to produce this, we want something that's worked straight away. And also, if we're going to get professional programmers to do it, we might as well get them to do as much as we can before we start letting the stock assessment people loose to add things. So I, I, see, I see your point, but I also think we might as well try and get something fairly comprehensive to start with. It may not have um, biological interactions because that's not the most important thing, but it should not at least have a good set of selectivity curves, likelihood functions, all of these things that we would consider good practices. Yeah, I guess that's where philosophically I struggle a little bit. I, I like the uh, structure that uh, Castle 2 and Gadget have, which is things are built around the way you specify the model. Um, and essentially the software design is to be able to specify the options and have the links that allow the technicians who are experts in the mathematics to actually put in those pieces. What we need is to be, you know, I don't want to have to write thousands of lines of code to change a selectivity function. I want to be able to say, selects punt and give two parameters or however I do it in Gadget and then go into the code and know that there's a small piece of code uh, section that's been written for me where to put in what to do with selects punt basically. Um, and I think that's, to my mind, you know, we need someone who's smart enough to design that within a random effect structure uh, and then let people like, you know, Anders, Rick, uh, you know, uh, Brian, do the innovation in terms of the sort of mathematical formulation. We need the structure. We need the efficiency. Uh, we don't need programmers to tell us how to do stock assessment from a mathematical point of view. And, and again, that's basically the structure that we're starting as the premise for how we want to build MAS. Uh, MAS already is built to a prototype level. Uh, we didn't get uh, far enough to demo it here, but we've already achieved with it proof of principle uh, that we could do a statistical catch at age model without random effects yet. But we do a statistical catch at age model um, using that modular, you know, build in the selectivity function that you need essentially uh, when you ask for it. Any comments? Okay. Um, any other topics? Yeah, I mean, again, I'm sort of proliferal to this because I'm not going to be funding anything. Um, <laughs> but I do think that given that we've got pretty much all the players in the room, um, I think having a discussion of what the, you know, particularly the divide, I, I always draw a line right across the middle of the United States. 
because uh, historically, if you were to the left or west, you were using integrated analysis, and if you were to the right, you were using VPA, and that's changed, obviously. But to be honest, that line still sort of pervades a lot of the collaborations. Um, there's perhaps the line has moved a little bit to the east in the United States, may have almost moved to, to the east coast. Uh, but I do think we should think about how we, uh, or how someone uh, takes this meeting forward, because I don't think you want to lose the momentum you've got. There are about six or seven people that probably need to be locked in a room, um, thankfully not me, uh, for a while. And, and, and you know, we, we're talking about generalities, but I think the specifics of how do we get this collaboration to actually move forward is, is, is actually going to be vital for, for being able to get to where you want to get to, Mark. Just charge a few thousand dollars every time stock synthesis is used for assessment will be good. Uh, someone down the back? Yeah, Patrick. <laughs> well, just uh, on that point of maintaining momentum, I'm, the thing I was hoping would come out of this workshop and what I think would be a, a big success is if we just outlined, and every, people have been saying this already, but the requirements of the, of the model in a sort of design document that engineers and scientists could pick up and work on independently, but collaborate through the tools, you know, that offer remote collaboration like GitHub and other things so that people could share modules, code, whatever, and port them in and out as appropriate. Um, but if that design document existed, then I think there'd be a lot of momentum coming out of this. Any comments? Um, what are you going to do this evening? What am I going to do? I'm going to my. You've got a 14 hour flight, my friend. No, I've got a one hour flight to Natia. Yeah, Anders. No, I would just say that I, I like the idea of an NCs working group to, to set up this. I, I mean, it takes a while to make a design document like that. It's not the last 15 minutes we have here. I, I, I was think, as I was seeing this, NCs, if, if you can get it to work, this, that's exactly what they're designed to do. I've, 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 got, I've got money to set up groups, but this is a little too specific for my, for my talks tonight. So do we have someone that belongs to the boys club so we can get in? We, 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 we know people who know people. I think it's a reasonable idea. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thanks. I really like that um, comment of Patrick's and suggestion that would be hugely beneficial for us as we're planning projects like Castle 2. Not so much to know exactly what these design specifications might be, but more to inform us so that we don't close down possibilities for the software development. So we leave doors open in the technical aspects of what's going on. And not completed, no. <laughs> okay, uh, anyone else got a comment? Yeah. Um, Sorry, Mark, um, I just wonder whether it'd be useful at a very, uh, given the time we've got left, I mean, we can't sit here in the next 50 minutes and redesign and specify the next generation model, but, but there's some things that have been coming out, uh, of the discussions that I think in principle would be useful to sort of document or feedback from this um, and I'm getting a sense that the next generation we want the flexibility in those models to be able to so you don't lock the door to subsequent features that you might want to add in and so I'm trying to get a sense from the experts here as to what are like core fundamental requirements relative to the, uh, Andre's example of I just want a new selectivity function that you can bolt on and, and I'll just summarize as a straw man, throw it out there, the sort of things I've been hearing. For me, first off, my view is that they need to be able to do total length age integration. So carrying that length age matrix forward in time, not necessarily you might want to do it on every single assessment, but the ability to do that, particularly for simulations. The simulation is absolutely critical, but I think in future, we might want to think about doing stock assessments that actually are linked 
four million meters that age integrated. Um, Multi-species interactions uh, are, are a future, um, and the ability for having two stocks interact with each other and predator-prey type dynamics is, is, I think, somewhere we need to be going. Um, the whole question of space and, and multiple partition space is important. Um, I did another one that's now gone out of my head, but random effects. Thank you. That's one that I was trying to remember. So. That's enough for me talking, but are, are there any other fundamental characteristics that need to be there? To be honest, that was my list as well. I mean, everything else builds, I mean, the predation thing I'm a little nervous about because it has some technical aspects that would be, could be from a design point, very challenging. If you're actually doing the predation inside the model rather than the predation outside the model, just because of the nature of the beast. But, you know, I would, that's how I would, that those would be the, the, the design around which I build the infrastructure. Um, because I think each of those are, are challenges that have some particularly computational implications. Putting another selectivity function in, changing a growth curve, at the end of the day, it's painful, you'll get it wrong, but it doesn't change the, the fundamental structure of the problem. Um, well, ta but again, anything that's a likelihood is a lot easier than the dynamics themselves. The so dynamics is what... The likelihoods. You have to put the dynamics in the tag. Right, but it's, it, you're, you're, you'd, you'd, you'd copy the dynamics of the, of the population. It's a partition. Well, there's lots of partitions. I mean, sex is a partition, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, Mark. I'm assuming in the movement bit, we're also going to be talking about <laughs> tagging as well. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll have close kin market capture for human species. Yeah. Okay. So related to this, a lot of these are partitions. And so we talked a little bit about this previously. And the thing is, do you have specific par partitions identified or do you have general partitions and um, one thing that I was thinking about is that there's um, if I get the terms right so in uh, I guess I don't know if it's in all of computer science or if it's just in website development but there's front end and back end and so the back end is like the architecture the front end is like the user interface but with the partitions you could have a back end that had um, maybe some really important partitions that are specific, like age and length maybe, and then you have a general partition, which could be used for everything else. But on the front end, you can actually have specific partitions for each of these, which might make it easier to develop the user interface, or maybe it's easier for people to understand, whatever. But all you're having then is the translation from that front end into the back end. And if you had to add a additional partition you don't have to change the architecture you might have to change the front end because it just doesn't go well but you wouldn't have to change the underlying uh, back end and that might make it easier to code it for the user interface or inputting data and all that sort of stuff i'm assuming that's how castle and gadget are both operating is that there is a fundamental dimension that's stuck in the model for everything and then there's all other partitions and then there's a list of pointers which get you from immature uh, blue uh, card to some partition in the model because that's the most logical way of constructing I mean in the old days those were linked lists I don't know if those even exist anymore but um, that's how you do it in Fortran that's that's yeah. so um, yeah John yeah, yeah um, a couple of times we we touched on the need to have density dependent processes. And I'm just wondering um, down on the sort of deep level of the data structures, how, how that, whether that has any implications for the design, et cetera. Um, but I, I, I heard a few people say on a couple of occasions that it's important to include, include that. And just by the way, I, I fully agree with all of those comments that have been made about random effects, length, age, etc. I think they're the, the really critical ones to that define what a next generation model should look like. Yeah, I mean, I can't speak generically for density dependence, but 
uh, the, the structure I've got in my semi-general model is essentially one of the attributes of growth, for example, would be its, the possibility of its density dependentness. Uh, but that would be whether you choose that particular option. So by definition, everything's static and then you, you, you move away from that. So, but again, what you don't want to do is, is build the model around density dependent recruitment and, not, and, and then have a, a real challenge to be able to put in a essentially a class, which is the extent of density dependentness. That is not a word. None, no student should use density dependentness. <laughs> okay, any other comments? One of those features in Gadget is actually you can, uh, you can put in, in uh, what's called a model variable in Gadget, which is basically biomass of the, of the stock into any formula you, you have. So this is actually a feature which is, I, I actually found quite buggy, but, but uh, that's something I didn't want. But I think the idea is good here. That you, if you, you if you, you can specify the growth as a as a as a function of just your regular von Bettermann growth curve as a function of the biomass of of the stock, or you can also just define any other process based on that. So anywhere you have a have a have a have a variable. Yeah, Alistair. Yeah, thank you. And um, comes in for the last bit at the end. Um, nice to see you all here. It, was, it sounds like it's been a great week, and I'm sorry that I managed to miss most of it. Uh, I, one of the things that I'm, I'm hearing is, is a list of individual requirements, which is fine, because that's what we're trying to think about as the next generation of software. But to my mind, many of them fall into categories such as what processes do we want to allow? And going back to this earlier comment, which says, what we want to do is design a system that allows processes to be added as people see the need for them. So if it's a density dependent growth or density dependent end, the system has to be flexible enough so that process can be added in. The second thing that we haven't touched on, and that's because most of us in the room are modelers and we're thinking about what is it that we want to do, is the next part of it, which is how do people interface with it? How do they look at it? How do they read it? And how do they communicate with the program and how does it communicate back? So one of the things that I'm sure Rick can do Anders can do and I can do with powerful models is I can read an input file and an output file like a book. It, to me, it talks to me because it's clean, it's easy, and it's simple, and I can understand the model structure just by looking at a castle file. I would like the next generation to be able to have that language built in so that people can look at the parameter files and go, I know what this is doing, rather than reading someone's transcription of that in a paper or somewhere else. And for the purposes of review and copying it and then replicating it in other systems, that becomes a very easy process now to understand what the model's doing. So one of the characteristics I'd like to see in the next generation piece of software is human readable input and output files so that the model becomes easily interpretable to a wide range of people. Just when I understood 31, 32, and 33. It's like, okay, any other comments? Andrew? Just, just on that, as a Fortran and ADMB programmer, moving to an R interface made that process so much easier. Because by, you know, ADMB can handle strings and stuff, but it's clunky. Whereas in R, you just read in your, you know, you search for a particular label and that tells you what selectivity you've got. Um, it, you know, it, that, that changed my whole approach to, to setting up the, the, the structure of the input file. And it also means if it's in R, you can set it up that order doesn't matter, which again, in, a, in many of our programs, you know, you expect line one to be da da da, line two to be blah, blah, blah. If you set it, if you, if you just do it as a search, like I guess it's actually very similar to the way R for SS reads the report file, is it just finds a label and off it goes. You can, you can, you can put the end of the, you can put your projections as your first entry in your input file, which sounds weird, but it still works. And that's why we're looking at JSON as an input format with the MAS, because it gives you that same kind of capability. Okay, any other comments? Yeah, Malcolm. Um, just the point that when I've, I've been writing some uh, custom software, sorry, but um, I, I always get it to generate a, a data template 
a, a user readable data template uh, that then people can edit. But the template itself can be run as an input and it makes sense and it actually generates output. It's a sort of my last ditch integrated uh, test. Um, so so that I, I think that sort of um, just to enhance or e expand a little on Alistair's comment would, is all I'm getting at. I think there are many ways of implementing these things. And if we can help the user, it's, it should really all be about the user. Um, uh, then if we can help that, uh, and in amongst the users, I include myself, if I, even if I've written the software. So if we can help them, uh, it's always to the good. Yeah, so Alistair, you missed, um, you missed the whole meeting. Yeah, some, some of the um, sessions on, on user interfaces and, and you know, output, and we know the you know, R for SS, which has been really helpful for a lot of things. And we saw the SAM uh, user Anything you said, so we have yep. that already. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no matter whether we do Okay, anything else? What about funding? Who's going to give us money? Or who's going to give themselves money? How much do you need? Yeah, how, how much would you think this would cost? Yeah. I don't know if it costs that much. Uh, Rick probably does know. So how, how much does the survey cost? Yeah, don't we, ever try to equate a software package with a survey. Well, we're doing a dolphin survey. It's going to cost a couple of million dollars. So uh, people don't think that way. <laughs> a couple of million dollars. I think we'd solve this no, problem. You're not helping. You're not helping. I, I, to be honest, I think that's a question you ask when you, you know, part of this, to my mind, is the NC's working group or whatever it is that. Getting the design right might almost cost as much as the actual coding, to be honest. Um, so I, 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 I would suggest you don't probably spend too much on that, particularly as no one's going to put up their hand and say, I'm going to pay for this, even be off. So unfortunately, I have to catch a taxi to get my plane. So Simon's going to take over. <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, so thanks a lot for everyone coming. It was great to have you here and it's been an impressive um, lot of presentations and discussions and I think we're actually making progress. So this is a big step forward. I, I think if we didn't have this workshop and got you all together, we'd probably be five years behind the, the timeline of actually getting this done. So I, I appreciate you all coming. Well, before he does leave, um, I think, uh, thankfully, I am now in the chair and I can actually say, I think we really need to thank Simon, Mark, uh, as well as all the local organizers. Uh, so firstly, before we get to funders, we will thank as well. How about we all give a round of applause to, to Simon, to Mark and the people who've kept us well fed. I don't think we need to applaud the U.S. government. Uh, I don't, is that even legal? I don't even know you can do that. Um, but I think you can salute. Well, those of us who are Australians don't do that very well. Uh, so uh, just on behalf of almost everybody, uh, I think we should just thank all the sponsors. Uh, CAPM, obviously, without which we wouldn't be here today. NIWA uh, for supporting a big chunk of this. Um, the, sorry? Fisheries New Zealand, anybody else that should be thanked? No, we can thank ourselves. Um, well, uh, on behalf of everybody, if we could pass those thank yous to the relevant people, uh, because I, I think CAPM really does play an incredibly valuable role. Um, and, uh, you know, this has been one of the, the more exciting meetings. It's a bit adventurous for CAPM. It was going outside the best practices, but I think it's shown that, you know, CAPM can be more than, more than what it's been before. So, uh, again, thank you to the, to the sponsors. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can now go. And we can continue our discussion for, what, a half an hour? Is that what I'm... Well, I, I, as long as you guys want. Oh, okay. Well, that... Half an hour is on the schedule. Okay. Um, so, Simon, are you, you, you're running with the mic? Okay. Um, so, any further thoughts? Uh, I think we've, uh, I try to avoid the whole funding, but I think the idea of, you know, how do we move this thing forward without having another CAPM, 
Um, I'm looking at Patrick and Rick and, um, and perhaps Anders. Patrick, what are your thoughts? And, and I think we've also had a lot of input from our European and US colleagues. I'm quite keen on hearing a little bit more about how New Zealand might be involved in, in, in this because the main players seem to be the European groups, Rick and his compadres, but also New Zealand. New Zealanders are all left. So Patrick? Okay, yeah. Um, I kind of don't understand the question because I think we largely arrived on maintaining kind of regional programs and projects that develop these models and perhaps in better coordination and collaboration and some common uh, direction, I suppose. But so how would a single funding source accomplish that? I'm not thinking of, I'm thinking more a coordinate. I mean, we've talked about NCs as we threw that out. The question is, are there other and better ways to do that? Because I think the sum of the parts is, uh, you know, the whole is worth more than the sum of the parts. I think there's a lot of intellectual capital around here. You know, as much as we read each other's papers, I think just listening to people certainly helps me. And so NCs is one option. Are there other options? Do we want to think about this? How, how, do, we, how do we maximize the, the intellectual capital uh, from a design point of view as much as anything else? Well, just quick follow-up. Could we do this again at some moderate frequency, five years or whatever? I think that's certainly, a, assuming CAPM exists, and I hope it does, um, you know, this, this would certainly be a very sensible thing to do. But I think it would be, I, I would like to see something happening between now and then in order to actually have something to meet about. Malcolm. Andre, do you actually think you'd even stand a chance of getting funding without at least a bit of a, a detailed proposal? And I, I don't mean too detailed, but at least some sort of uh, summary as to what would be uh, produced. Well, I mean, I, okay, so I'll tell you where I think we are going and Simon can correct me. Um, firstly, there's going to be a, obviously a report of this meeting and Mark has been taking notes, so he will draft. I think he has to draft because otherwise he doesn't get funding to pay for it. Um, so we will have a report of this meeting uh, that, that will obviously have an executive summary which will cover some of the general discussion that we've just heard. So uh, then I would hope that that would lead to some meeting, whether it's NCs or a get together at ICs or something like that, where we would flesh out, uh, even if it's not a full design document, but at least a, you know, a, a, design, a design of a design. Um, and then you would probably start to think about chopping it around. Um, how best, I, who, who funds that, I don't know. Uh, but I think we need something pretty concrete to say uh, what we want. Uh, the other thing is that I think each of the groups we've talked about have some investment capability in the sense of Biaki's time, Anders' time. So it's not just we want money. Uh, these groups are actually willing to put something in as well, if, unless I'm misreading it. So it's not just give me a large chunk of change and I'll employ some postdocs, but, you know, 2% of Rick's time will be dedicated to working on the project or whatever. Simon? I mean, I don't have anything to add to that, really. There will be a workshop document with recommendations, so we can... Yeah, as, as I think about it, what we might even do, assuming that some of the, the principles might be at the next cap and we could have an extra day at the end of that cap and to to just start that discussion. So there, there, there may be some uses. I mean, obviously it'd be open to anybody, but that might be a way to, to move this thing ahead so we can actually get somewhere. Andre, you, I still hear in the way you presented a expectation that there is a development effort that's different than the current regional development efforts. Is that the way you're, you're thinking of it or? I'm thinking that there are common features that we want to we want to make sure we can get the, the common features right um, and essentially learn from each other as to what those what the best way to implement those features are. Uh, Anders? Yeah, I was thinking about the common features. So if there are 
certain likelihoods we need, if there are certain selectivity functions, if there are things like that. I'm sensing that TMB might play a central role in this. So we could have some of these features simply added to TMB so they were available to everyone when building this thing. That would be awesome. And we have the capability, like uh, in ADMB, we have a, a kind of a contrib right. place in the TMB project. So it wouldn't be something that Casper would necessarily have to deal with, but it would be still part of the central availability in TMB. Oh. I'll stay John? inside. Thanks, John? yeah. I, I think we've heard this week um, through the descriptions of some of the existing methods that um, each of them are likely to have their strengths and weaknesses. And I think we could really do with a better documentation, particularly of the strengths. So, you know, that we, we're not necessarily starting with a, with a blank slate as we move towards a new generation model that we can we can perhaps cherry pick the the good things from each of the the existing models and and move from there if not the code certainly the concepts behind the code yeah i mean we've all of you who've um been who who contacted mark uh remember we, you would have received a, a email about details of your packages that's pretty high level i'm hoping mark will turn that into a paper with all of the contributors to that spreadsheet as co-authors. Uh, that's a first pass of, you know, what are, the, what are the core features, what are the core design aims of the different packages? So I, I'm certainly hoping that one paper from this is sort of a synthesis of, of what all the different models are aiming to do. I think I saw some other hand. Did I? Oh, Alex. Uh, microphone, you're a quiet guy. I don't know why I've got a microphone. Yeah, just I'm thinking in terms of the user, and I'm not sure quite where the, the current software is at, but um, you've got a, a, a manual, which is, I guess, a, a big PDF document that, for example, in SS, it, you can search through, find the answer. No. In, in R, uh, for any particular function, you've got uh, help, you can go and find it. So I'm just wondering, in terms of Understanding what each of the switches would do in a in this you know potentially quite large, flexible um, model, I think for the user to have the ability on you know on the computer to basically say, this switch, what does it do exactly, and then some documentation about the underlying equations or things that are actually how it affects the model and what the implications are of of, of turning it on or off would be really useful, I think. Yeah, if we had another person to the SS development team, that's one of the things we would build so that you had complete hyperlink between the user manual, the examples, the technical document, so that, yeah, exactly as you say, it's just development time to create something like that. I think just moving, as, as Alistair said, to text-based input would certainly help. So rather than knowing that option 12 is logistic, if it's an age structured uh, selectivity pattern, having something called age selectivity, I think you know, that may not solve every problem, but at least it will get you in the right direction. So you know, I, I, the, the, the days of not having to know what number 32 are hopefully over. But I think the, the, you're right. The, the problem with these things is they become monsters. I mean, even SS, I don't think you can almost find anything in the manual because it's gotten so huge now. Further thoughts, particularly on next steps? Yep, Brian. Uh, would it be worth trying to come up with a set of stocks, like input files that tr people try to, like have a, like everyone tries to run, like in a, sorry, example data files that in the simplest form of each of the models can run. I mean, kind of like the IC's working group is, yeah, is doing. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking also, that we should just piggyback on, on that working group. Yep. Well, there is some work just kind of among ourselves at the toolbox for this to create a repository where we're putting testing data that has been translated between models um not just like so the data that could be used and then the translations as well so it's a start but i think more of that makes a huge amount of sense especially for model comparisons as well is that part of the methods working group because i would that that group tends to cover a lot of the folks around here 
but there's crossover. Uh, right. That's yeah, we have some participants in both. I know, I found them in my building. But that only covers like half of the models. You know, it doesn't have, there's no multi-fan, there's no gadget, there's no uh, the castle, right? Those are only SAM, SS, ASAP, WAM. Yeah, and, uh, yeah but that was by design because the, the comparison projects are all based upon the age structured models. And yes, there probably needs to be another comparison project with another set of files that is tailored towards the age length models. And we don't have that. And that would be, would be good. Right, and we can't tell people to run other people's data files. We can, I think, I, I think we should, I mean, one of the outcomes of this meeting is clearly there are continued benefits to, to doing that. Uh, and we would encourage the folks who aren't part of the process already to, to join, but we have no way to make that happen. Well, I don't. So that brings up, who are we missing here? Are there other development groups out there that aren't represented? I, I think a little bit about whether we have full coverage of some of the Northern European efforts, and, but uh, I'm un less clear on that because it's not all gadget, right? Well, there is Muppet as well in Iceland, um, but that's, a, <laughs> that's an ACE-based uh, MSC framework which we use for, for, for domestic purposes. Uh, but yeah, mainly the, uh, the sort of length, age length based has, have been covered by Gadget and sort of the likes, whereas, it's, whereas more the, uh, the other assessment models have been age based, which are fairly similar to uh, to uh, other age based methods would we, we, you know of. Yeah, I mean, I, I think based on my knowledge, we've got m all the main ones represented in this room. There are plenty of packages that are used, you know, for a couple of examples, but um, I mean, we haven't talked much about like GMAX and they're, they're, yeah, so they're all my, what I call the minor players are, are out there, but you know, the, the We've, I mean, maybe XSA needs to come back into the game, although I'd hope to see that fade out. Um, Alan. Yeah, I just want to note that um, I'm aware of uh, DFO or Western Canada has iScam, um, that package that they use, Integrated Statistical Catch at Age model written by Steve Martel. They've been doing some development on that. And then there's a little bit of uh, Colerain slash Awatea floating around in the west of Canada still. I think we could probably park that one into the XSA category. But as I was thinking about it, I, I, I don't know Canada uh, east or west is, I mean, again, I think there's a, a quite a variety of methods, but I don't know of a sort of general framework. Noel? I mean, to my knowledge, they're the DFO. I mean, I've been out of it for eight years. They have some type of methods uh, uh, meeting, but I don't think they're at all coordinated or thinking to develop anything. Uh, not, not, that, not that I've heard, but then DFOs, like it's a really closed shop. They don't communicate out much. So maybe they could be doing all sorts of things and they just want to keep it to themselves. So. I mean, Brian, do you have any sense, given that you should be talking to the Canadians across the border? I mean, as it's well known, the, the West Coast, we've got this big wall between British Columbia and, and, and uh, West Coast. No, no ground fish has ever crossed that boundary except Hake. Kelly. You know about Eastern Canada? No, not Eastern, but Western. I think that uh, especially with the newer generation coming through that we're talking a bit more and with having Sean Anderson there, uh, the lines of communication are open quite a bit more than they used to be. That's the West Coast, right? Yeah. yeah. No? Lawrence, I guess the question is, are they developing models and that, that the group wants to be aware of? I, I think it's the awareness. You know, I, I think 
as we think towards the next meeting where we want to continue this, let's be certain we know what the good ideas are out there without just reading the literature. You know, we should be a little bit targeted in the invitations to the next meeting uh, to try to you know, draw in an even broader range of people who are doing good development work, have some good ideas, and you know, maybe they have something that works better than what we're planning to use them. I mean, I read the literature quite a bit, and there's not a lot of DFO stock assessment modeling that gets published that I've seen recently. Most of it's from Noel and, and, and your group, basically. Um, I could criticize NIWA for the same thing. NIWA, you need to publish more. Um, but fortunately, I know the NIWA people. Alan is smiling. Okay. Um, Anders. There is, uh, from our institute, also the, uh, the uh, stochastic multi-species model, SMS by Morton Winter, and that, that could go into the pool also. Is that on our list of, uh, did, did someone supply that to Mark? No. Can we task you to help with that? I can ask Morton to do it, but I can't do it, but I can ask Morton to do it. Okay, you've officially been asked. No? And Anders, uh, the, is that the multi-species, the state-based multi-species one, Vanessa was? No, I, I, that, that's not fully developed yet. I okay, think. so. But, the, but uh, Morton's model. It is, that's is, been around. Uh, that is in use. That's as old as, the, the SMS, that's, is that, that's been around for a long time now. Yeah. Yeah, but is this the state-space multi-species one? under being it's continued still, to be developed it's under development yeah so yeah I mean, it needs to be kept aware of where where that's going yeah. okay i detect we're slowly reaching beer hour here oh. in yep. relation to keeping a, a complete list of those models that were sent to mark i don't know if mas was sent I can follow up with Matthew on that, but John and our group could also contribute. At least um, wasn't talked explicitly here, but has been mentioned. But we can incorporate those features into whatever Mark develops. Yeah, well, I'm sure he'll contact everyone. We've got about 12 packages in that list right now. Um, we also have a ongoing design document that goes with it. So we'll check on the potential availability of that. Okay, any, I think it would be nice to start wrapping up. Any final comments people want to make about what we achieved here, uh, what we didn't achieve, what we should be prioritizing? And I'm not just thinking about this meeting, but also from a CAPM point of view, because we're hoping CAPM, CAPM will continue even beyond uh, 2020. 2020 is going to be a pretty busy year for all of us because we're all going to go to Seattle and then we're going to party in Adelaide. And if Adelaide is what it normally is, we'll take another three months to recover from that. So the next meeting will be 2021. Um, yes, Malcolm. I'm um, just thinking the, you mentioned the summary of this CAPM meeting. Yep. And I imagine that that would be potentially quite influential. Potentially quite influential. Um, so I suspect, well, maybe, uh, I'm thinking in terms of the uh, various international groups who currently have some funding for maintaining their main, doing their maintenance and development. We wouldn't want to compromise that in the process of gaining support for any future work. So we'd need to write that summary very carefully. Uh, would, would the main developers, uh, maybe we need to get their comments on that summary. It's just a thought. Well, the way we've done this in the past, um, and I'm hope, I was assuming we're going to do it again this way, is the summary is primarily for the funders, which is quite a long document, not necessarily terribly well edited, if we can help it. Um, but what the, when we write the special issue, we'll write a, a succinct, uh, well-written uh, summary that you know, will not be thousands of pages long uh, with random Andre comments in them. Um, and that's the document that'll be more public. Um, and so I, I, I don't think you want to see necessarily the blow by blow, um, but I think the, the, the general one is, is will come out of both 
this meeting, but also the, the papers in the special issue. Simon, you're actually in charge of this. I'm just sitting here. Well, actually, Mark's in charge of writing <laughs> the, the chairman's report in the in the document. So, um, but if if that's the feeling of the meeting that we want to have a review of what goes out as the workshop document, then um, we're certainly open to that. Okay. Any other final thoughts? Yeah, Brian. One of the lower hanging, so we talked about putting together NC's working group to discuss the design document, which is not me, it's other people, but the uh, easier lower hanging thing would be to maybe merge some of these like output packages to make plots and diagnostics. But if we just leave at the stage where we are right now, I don't think any of that is really gonna happen, but uh, it would be worth thinking about. I don't know how that goes forward, but trying to not have every model have its own plots to do the same thing would be nice. I think that we've pretty much, I mean, we've agreed with the value of having common plotting formats, common data formats. I don't think we're, this is not the right meeting to decide whether that's gonna be policy or not, but I think pretty clearly that was identified as a desirable feature of, of moving forward. Sorry? That's up to the people who actually have to do the work, I think. I mean, I think people just have to get together and chat. I don't think we're, we're not the body to just tell other people what to do. Except Kelly, who needs to write up some papers from her thesis. Humiliation, I'll eventually get those papers done. So Brian, is, it's not an ideal solution, but it's, I think, as far as we can take it at this, at this meeting. I still have papers to write up for my thesis as well. <laughs> I can humiliate you in public as well, if you want. Robin, didn't you, haven't you got a few as well? Okay. Um, I get the sense that we're down to four people saying things. If so, um, I think what I'm going to do is uh, close this public part of the meeting and probably pass it back to Simon for his final thoughts because you're the last, you're the last official person in this meeting, not me. Oh, well, thank you all for coming. Um, I forgot to thank uh, Jennifer Devine and Teresa Amar for helping with the organisation. Um, so the meeting is closed. Thanks. Oh.